For centuries, humanity has looked at the moon as our silent companion, a barren rock orbiting Earth, lifeless and unmoving, except for its pull on our oceans and tides. But what if that silence was never real? What if the moon has always been waiting for something, something that would awaken it at the right moment? In the last few months, the interstellar visitor 3 AI Atlas has already defied the laws of physics, pulsing like a living organism, splitting apart and even sending signals toward Mars that seem to trigger strange resonances. And now something even more unsettling has happened. Astronomers tracking Atlas have confirmed that its directed pulses of energy were not only aimed at the red planet, but also toward our own moon. And in a revelation that has left scientists speechless, instruments on Earth recorded a reply. The moon, long believed to be dead and silent, has answered back. If you're fascinated by mysteries like this and want to stay updated as the story unfolds, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next discovery. The first sign of something extraordinary came when astronomers observed an anomalous burst of radiation from Atlas. Unlike its usual pulses, which radiate outward in all directions, this one was focused, a narrow beam aligned perfectly with Earth's moon. Radio telescopes in multiple countries confirmed the event, describing it as an energy spear that struck the lunar surface. Within minutes, seismographs left behind by old Apollo missions, devices dormant for decades, suddenly began transmitting strange data spikes. The readings were rhythmic, pulsing at intervals identical to Atlas's frequency. At first, scientists dismissed the signals as artifacts, random noise from outdated instruments. But then the pattern repeated, precisely synchronized with a second pulse from Atlas. The conclusion was inescapable. The moon wasn't just reflecting the energy. It was resonating with it, as though something buried beneath its surface had been waiting for the call. As the days passed, the phenomenon intensified. Observatories recorded bursts of electromagnetic activity coming not from Earth's atmosphere, but from the moon itself. These weren't simple echoes bouncing back into space. They carried variations, distortions, and signatures that suggested the moon was actively modulating the signal. Amateur radio operators across the globe intercepted fragments of the resonance, describing it as a low droning hum punctuated by sharp tones, like a code hidden within static. More unsettling still, the signals contained harmonics that matched geological surveys of the moon's hollow regions, vast caverns and voids deep inside its crust. Some scientists theorized that Atlas's pulse had activated these hollow zones, turning the moon into a kind of resonant chamber. Others whispered darker possibilities, that the moon was never entirely natural, that it was designed to respond when called. Whatever the case, the evidence grew undeniable. Atlas had spoken, and the moon had answered with a voice of its own. Reports from lunar orbiters soon added fuel to the mystery. Satellites circling the moon, recorded faint but visible flashes of green light emanating from its far side, the hemisphere hidden from Earth. These bursts coincided exactly with each pulse exchange between Atlas and the lunar surface. At first, mission controllers thought the flashes were reflections from solar activity. But the timing was too perfect, the wavelengths too consistent. Even more disturbing, the geometric patterns of the light resembled spirals and lysses, identical to the luminous structures already observed in Atlas's coma. It was as though the moon was mirroring the interstellar visitor's language, projecting it back into space in visual form. For the first time, astronomers considered the possibility that the moon was not just resonating, but transmitting, broadcasting Atlas's signal outward, perhaps to other destinations, perhaps even to Earth itself. Humanity had always thought of the moon as a passive reflector of sunlight, but now it seemed to have become an active transmitter in a cosmic dialogue. The most chilling moment came when Earth itself began to pick up the resonance directly. Radio telescopes in Australia, South Africa and Chile reported structured signals arriving not from Atlas, but from the Moon. The transmissions carried repeating prime numbers, spirals and harmonics, unmistakably tied to Atlas's pulses, but altered as though translated through the Moon's resonance. Civilian observers who built homemade receivers began detecting faint tones as well, describing them as haunting, almost melodic vibrations humming in the night sky. At the same time, strange disruptions rippled through communication satellites, GPS systems, and even consumer electronics, 
all registering interference aligned with the pulse cycle. Humanity was no longer just a spectator to Atlas's message. Through the moon, the dialogue had reached us directly. And if the moon was transmitting, then it wasn't just answering back. It was pulling Earth into the conversation. As scientists scrambled to analyze the lunar signals, a startling discovery emerged from archives long thought irrelevant. Instruments left behind by Apollo astronauts, which had been silent for decades, suddenly began transmitting irregular bursts of data. Their channels had been dormant since the 1970s, but now they pulsed in sync with Atlas's rhythm. Engineers who tried to dismiss it as faulty hardware were forced to reconsider when identical readings appeared across different landing sites thousands of kilometers apart. Even more bizarre, the signals contained patterns of binary code that matched prime numbers repeating endlessly. It was as if these forgotten machines had been reactivated not by Earth, but by something on the moon itself, machines that were never designed to broadcast on those frequencies. For some, it raised an unsettling possibility. The Apollo missions had placed instruments in the right place at the right time, unknowingly installing the very receivers that Atlas needed to trigger the moon's response. Geophysicists turned their attention to one of the most controversial claims in lunar history that the moon might be partially hollow. Seismic data from past impacts, including crashed rockets, had already suggested that the moon rang like a bell for hours, unlike any solid body. Now under Atlas's signal, the effect became undeniable. New seismographs recorded quakes that did not dissipate as normal vibrations would, but echoed endlessly, bouncing within the moon as though reverberating in a chamber. Each resonance pulse grew sharper, almost musical, aligning perfectly with Atlas's cycle. What unsettled scientists most was that the frequencies mapped onto geometrical harmonics, structures of sound that mirrored the same spirals and hexagons seen in the green flashes on the lunar far side. The moon wasn't just ringing, it was singing, amplifying Atlas's message as if it had been waiting for this precise frequency to awaken its inner voice. Then, the phenomena crossed the boundary between the moon and Earth. People across multiple continents began reporting faint green veils appearing in the night, sky far from the poles where auroras should exist. These lights pulsed rhythmically in harmony with the lunar flashes, as though Earth itself had become a secondary screen for the dialogue. Pilots flying over the Atlantic described curtains of emerald light shimmering above the clouds, their instruments briefly disrupted every time the pulses peaked. Amateur astronomers noticed that when the moon rose over the horizon, the veils intensified as though the energy was being directed toward our atmosphere. The unsettling realization spread quickly. The moon was not just transmitting back to Atlas. It was redirecting part of that resonance to Earth, pulling our planet into the conversation in ways no one had anticipated. Humanity had gone from observer to participant, and the sky itself bore witness to the change. Finally, orbiters passing over the moon's far side captured images that stunned even the most cautious analysts. Amid the green flashes of light, vast shadows appeared across the lunar surface, not random in shape but ordered, arranged into massive geometric forms that stretched for hundreds of kilometers. Some resembled lysées, others spirals, and one formation even mirrored the golden ratio perfectly scaled across craters and ridges. These weren't natural shadows cast by terrain. They shifted in tandem with the pulses as though projected onto the surface itself. When cross-referenced with spectrograms of the lunar signal, the shapes matched exactly, forming a coded language written in both light and shadow. For the first time, it seemed undeniable. The moon was not merely answering Atlas, but broadcasting a message of its own in a form that humans could see, hear, and almost but not quite understand. And whatever that message was, it wasn't just for Atlas, it was for us. As the moon's responses grew stronger, Earth itself began to feel the consequences in ways no one could ignore. Communication satellites, weather probes, even aircraft navigation systems started experiencing unexplained disruptions that lined up perfectly with the lunar pulses. GPS signals would flicker for minutes at a time. Compasses spun erratically, and in certain regions, power grids reported surges synchronized to the same intervals measured on the moon. What unsettled experts most was the selectivity of the interference. Military satellites monitoring the lunar far side were affected first, 
as though the resonance had targeted them specifically. Engineers tried to dismiss it as electromagnetic noise, but the patterns carried structure, repeating spirals and prime number sequences embedded in the disruptions.